The ban of Twitter in Nigeria has taken another twist as the move has made the federal government to commence the collection or plan to start the collection of tax from all social media platforms. Twitter, Facebook, Netflix, amongst others operating in the country. Well, according to the Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, the move is part of efforts by government to regulate the social media platforms, as well as checkmate uh, the standard of operations of the networks in the country. In, ad in addition to regulating the social media platform, the federal government insists that all social media companies doing business in Nigeria must be licensed urging them to refrain from using the platform for activities that are inimical to the growth of the economy. With foreign direct investment inflows into Nigeria still about $1 billion, coupled with other challenges facing the Nigerian economy, the big question now is what will be the impact of this development on investors' confidence to Africa's economy? A very big one. And this taxation method, what does it also mean to the entire tax system, already existing tax system that we have in the country? Well, I have to provide answers to this question, and of course, many others. Is joining me live uh, uh, via Zoom. That's Professor Abiola Sani from the Faculty of Law, University of Lagos. Prof, good afternoon, and thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon, Tolu. Good afternoon, viewers. Yes, Prof, let's go straight now to let me ask you first that how will you react uh, generally to this move by the federal government? Of course, it's aimed at generating revenue in form of taxation from social media platforms. Yeah, thank you, Tolu. It is legitimate for governments to leverage all revenue handles in order to get more revenue to provide basic infrastructure. And countries across the world are, are seeking to do that. The only concern I have here is that if you look at the context of the evolution of this current development, it is beginning to look like a penalty. The overriding policy seems to be driven by punitive measures rather than regulation. So I would have preferred a situation where we try to boost the confidence of the investors, and we try to incentivize them. Because there is a global consensus on the need to make sure that the giant tech companies who are raiding income across the world also give something back to the countries of source where they are making huge amount of revenue from subscribers. As a matter of fact, some countries have even gone ahead to establish their own digital taxation, including Britain, including France, although with some retaliation from US, where these com countries and uh, companies are located. So there is nothing unusual about taxing them, but the, 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 the issue is how do we do it right? How do we approach it in a way that will achieve the objectives? I think. The, core, the context of the current engagement with Twitter uh, will seem to have put the wrong foot forward. Hmm. A good way to start uh, there, Prof. But conversations around taxation uh, of digital economy in Nigeria has, of course, been on for some years. And uh, what is the current position of the law? The current position of the law is that some nations, like I said, yeah. have, because they could not wait for the global convergence. This is a problem whose time has, uh, the solution has to be based on the consensus of international community because the problem transcends national and regional. So there has to be a global platform to aggregate views and to agree on the appropriate rules of allocation. Because if you look at the model of operations of these companies, they are able to operate across the world without any requirement of registration of businesses and also uh, establishment of a fixed base. So because of that, they are practically anonymous to the government. So they contribute little or nothing in terms of tax revenue. There may be individuals who are making revenue 
through their activities. For example, all the people who are active in the social media space and all that. Huge opportunities. But in terms of revenue to government, it's almost new. So in 2019, the Finance Act introduced a concept known as significant economic presence. And then the concept is meant to regal around the traditional or the old requirement under the law of uh, permanent uh, establishment of fixed base. So that requirement uh, simply lower the threshold by saying if uh, a, a technology company makes a minimum of uh, 25 million in Nigeria from various uh, activities online, that company will be liable to pay tax in Nigeria. And then the minister had the power to establish or put in place an order in order to operationalize these provisions of the statute. And the, the minister did this in 2020 February. So we have a law in place since 2019. And also we have a legal uh, and administrative framework since February 2020. But the concern is that nothing seemed to have happened since then because of what I explained earlier about the global nature of this challenge. Because as we speak now, we should actually be talking about enforcement of the existing law, not calling on Twitter to come and register. There are obligations under the existing law imposing duty on them to register. So if they have not registered, the certain consequences should follow. So if no consequences, uh, if no consequences following their failure to register, then we need to check again and ask ourselves whether we have made the appropriate law. Because you must have people within your jurisdiction where your sovereign power can actually reach them before you can subject them to penalty and force them to comply. For example, in, uh, in Ghana, there cannot be any debate whether they have to register because they have a presence there. So there cannot be any debate on whether they have to have the tax identification number. They have to. It's a matter of course. So we need to go back and look at the law we made and ask ourselves basic question whether unilateralism has actually favored Nigeria. So if it has not favored us, we need to join forces with other countries of the world as U.S. is seeking to do and then have a collaborative approach rather than a unilateral approach. Hmm. Uh, thanks for that uh, clarity and understanding that point. Now, Prof, I, 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 was, I still want to follow up uh, with um, what the government of Nigerian government is doing at the moment. So what will be the main objective? Some say it could just be because government needs revenue and government is saying that I think we can make some money from this end. Why not let us uh, regulate and try to bring them together and license them? So is it money or what do you think the tax policy, what do you think is the objective of this, Prof? Money is important to functioning of government. Mm -hmm. And as a taxation expert, I've reinforced this at every forum. Mm -hmm. Without money, we can do little but nothing. So it's legitimate for government to look at various sources and ramp up the opportunities in order to get more, especially when we are talking about diversification, when we are talking about uh, low tax to GDP ratio and all that. So, and nations that have higher tax to gdp ratio like i told you are even taxing activities in the digital space so government should focus on when people make money when people spend and when people also uh, when people also pay there are activities going on that are taxable and government should try to encourage more of these activities and that is why it is a bit worrisome that this initiative may actually kill some businesses or slow down the economy. So what government is seeking to do is revenue, but in the context of what is playing out now, it appears government is trying to pull the full weight of uh, government on these organizations. 
And I don't think that will be sending the right signal. You know, uh, there is competition for foreign investment, as we have seen in the case of uh, location of Twitter office in Ghana rather than Nigeria. Twitter may be may unwittingly be vindicated that it has taken the right decision. Imagine what could have happened if Twitter were to be in the uh, physically in Nigeria. Even if no evil would be for them, uh, the major actors could actually come under apprehension that they might pick them up. This is not good uh, for the development of the economy. If you look at what uh, Governor uh, Sawolu said, uh, notwithstanding the political downside, it was fortunate enough to say that uh, this is hurting businesses, especially the small-scale businesses, especially some of the youths who ordinarily wouldn't have had the opportunities that uh, some of these platforms are, are, are provided in terms of capital, in terms of visibility, and look at the reward to the content creators. What I think we should be doing is to engage some of these more, uh, giant tech companies to attract them rather than repel them. But the good thing is that we understand that there is now an ongoing conversation between Twitter and, and, and the federal government. And my prayer is that uh, we get to the end of it very soon. I'd like us to also now touch on, uh, you know, the brief explanation you gave us with regards to what we have on ground. So why then is this existing law seems not to be working? What is wrong with it, Prof? So, Lou, if you try to solve locally a problem that is global, you are going to, you are going to be confronted with the limitation of your power. Law of any nation is territorial. If the National Assembly makes a law, it can only operate within Nigeria. The rule is that tax law cannot have effect in any other country without operations, and that is the basis of double taxation agreements. So if there are multidimensional, interregional, international problems, and we are trying to go about it alone, as we have done, via significant economic presence order. So at the end of the day, we are going to ask ourselves, what mileage have we gotten since the establishment of this legal framework? By now, we should have facts and figure on how much revenue we have generated. We are using Zoom right now, I doubt if Zoom is registered in Nigeria. Most of us watch films on Netflix, I doubt, if Netflix is registered in Nigeria. So if these businesses are making money in Nigeria and they are not registered in Nigeria and they are able to do so gleefully, whether we like it or not, it's only signals that they are beyond our our territorial reach, our sovereign power could not touch them. They are far beyond. What we can do is nothing but shadow boxing. And we need to come to terms with that reality when we are developing policy and administrative framework. And as powerful as United States is, United States in the past have made some laws that had uh, extraterritorial application. But in this regard, they are trying to carry other nations along. They are trying to work with uh, OECD. They are trying to work with uh, G, uh, G7 or G8. You know, they are trying to uh, create alliances and all that. All this, this, the, the, all this ongoing global discourse, you are going to see that tax issue will feature very, very prominently. Mm -hmm. So we need to recognize the limit of what we can do to somebody who is in our faces, who is in our spaces, who is creating externalities within our spaces, but who does not have physical presence in Nigeria. That is the lesson for us as uh, policymakers.
No, no. Uh, let's look at the economic angle uh, to all of this. Talking about the ban in its entirety. Earlier in the week, we got some figures from international agencies talking about billions of dollars being lost per hour. Uh, now, what do you think is the effect on the economy and, of course, the tax system uh, in your assessment? Honestly, if we do cost-benefit analysis, I'm not an expert on political uh, issues. I know there are serious political angles to this. But let's leave that for those who are experts in that area to engage and then guide us. But economically, it's going to hurt a lot of people. There are people who are just finding their feet through some of these platforms. Imagine the cost of even getting a space in form of a shop or in form of an office or in form of a building. But now without any, without having all that, people are able to showcase what they are selling. And the winners here are the teeming youths, some of who have been deprived by the by the negative effects of the downturn. I think even government is also going to be a loser. Government is going to be a loser. Government is on Twitter, government is on Facebook. So I, 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 I think we need to engage more with to an inclusive approach into this type of uh, uh, issues. And we need to be less spontaneous so that we can look at the issues more closely. And those who have knowledge in this area, especially the techie guys, can guide us. Because uh, as a lawyer, how we want to make a law that will be footer? Because what is the effect of having a law that cannot bite? We may be used to it in Nigeria, but that is not the way to go. Law should have biting effect for those who are not complying, especially those who are not complying with the tax law. Wrapping up this segment uh, now, now what are your thoughts, Prof, uh, on how all of these laudable objectives can be achieved as looking at all of the positives in uh, the, the, all of these platforms? Or basically, let's say, what's the way forward? Where do we go from here? Yeah, thank you very much, Tolu. Like I told you, there have been some initiatives by the tax authority before now on how to address this problem. So I think there should be a handshake between those who are making some of these new rules and the tax authority. If there had been some discussion, I'm sure they could have informed them that, look, there's already a law, which then brings us to the question of how do we enforce it? So normally, if we have an inclusive framework, people will know what is coming in terms of policy evolution, policy development, and stakeholders can make inputs. In other clients, there are usually studies whose reports are available in the public space on what the problem is and how to, how to go about it. If you look at OECD, their inclusive framework on BEPS had been on the internet for, 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 for years. And as soon as they finish a meet, an important meeting, and there is a progression, they update it. I think we should have a proper study of this issue so that uh, we do not cut our nose to spite uh, our faces. Then also, we should uh, rethink our unilateral approach towards solving this problem and try and see how we can contribute and influence discussions within the existing international framework. We can also, in my view, be a powerful voice within the AU uh, matrix so that uh, we, can, we, can, we, 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 we can bargain for what is best for the develop, uh, developing countries. Most importantly, at this time that every Naira counts, Government must put in place a system that is able to track all taxable income in the digital, in the digital space. 
and I'm aware FRS is already doing this, okay? So, but there must be a collaboration with the states who are responsible for uh, taxation and collection of uh, taxes of individuals. So, all the activities that are positive, that are resulting into profit, you cannot suddenly become a billionaire through some of these uh, platforms and then pay nothing to government. So if you have been struggling before and through the initiative of state and through the convergence of so many uh, initiative, you, you, uh, a, a taxpayer's economic situation improves significantly. There is no reason why he or she should not pay tax. But we have to bear in mind that nobody will pay willingly. Nobody will pay voluntarily. So government must follow the digital footprints and then go after them. So if we do all this, then I think we can now begin to refocus the existing framework and then tweak it along the path that will be more efficient. But most importantly, I don't think we can jump ahead of uh, international convergence because there will be consequences. There will be retaliatory measures. Mm. If we take certain steps against the giant tech companies, their own states will, re will, 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 will retaliate. And we already had that Biden condemned the prescription. Mm. So if it had been uh, during Trump, I'm sure the, the, the reaction of the presidency in US would have been more, 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 more vitriolic. So thank you very much. These are my initial thoughts. All right, of course, this is a huge, this is a huge issue. Honestly, this is a very huge issue. Yeah, and that is why I think there should be a proper study, hmm. which will be in public space, which people can review and then make their inputs. And we have to carry along those who are going to be affected. Yeah. It's a good way to leave it there, Professor Abiola Sonny. Thank you very much, a Faculty of Law, University of Lagos. Thank you for spending your afternoon with us. We really appreciate this. Enjoy your weekend, sir. My pleasure. Thank